Kai Lushar is a slapper, but don't let that fool you. She didn't have a single extra base hit in the regular season. Granted, she only played about half the year as a hitter due to an injury suffered in preseason. But she hit an RBI triple over the head of the left fielder yesterday. As we get started here, a beautiful afternoon for softball. 70 degrees even, wind about nine miles an hour blowing northeast, but it's kind of swirling. Sometimes it's out to right field, sometimes it's coming back toward the plate. Lushar, there is the slap, a chopper towards second. Tough play for Christina Foreman. No chance to get the speeds through Lushar. As a second baseman, your job is to make a quick transition with a quick little throw over to first base. Christina Foreman at second set her feet for her throw, but then forgot to secure the ball to make the throw. So a difficult transition for her as she pulled her eye off of the ball before keeping it in the glove. It goes down as an E4. Foreman had one yesterday as well. Field in outstanding condition, especially after the showers we had yesterday, which delayed Oregon's game two hours and 24 minutes in the fourth inning against Notre Dame. Allie Bunker has been one of the best Ducks players now for five years running. Four-time All-Pac-12 team. Probably would be five if not for the 2020 season cancellation. When she started 173 consecutive games coming into this one, it means so good that she is definitely necessary in a starting lineup that has changed 49 different times <laughs> this season. It's really interesting, too, because we asked Coach Melissa Lombardi about that, and she said, I think our lineup is pretty solid, just some tweaks here and there, as Lushar takes second. No throw from Lauren Kamens in the Arkansas catcher. That was a filthy pitch from Dels. It was, and the reason it was hard to make a throw or even any kind of play over at second is because Allie Bunker swung through this ball and then fell into the plate. It's not... Illegal, but it definitely gets in the way of the play. Bouchard 12 of 13 stealing now. Hannah Gamble at the hot corner stays hot. Picking up right where she left off yesterday. She was outstanding at third base making multiple web gems. And we interviewed her post game. She had a solo home run yesterday as well. I asked her, what do you take more pride in, the defense or the offense? She actually said the defense, and she was tremendous last night. Yeah, she was challenging every hitter for Harvard, playing almost halfway up the line on so many, one through nine. She's back even with the bag now as Tara McGowan swings through the first pitch from Shanice Dels. McGowan, one of the leaders, maybe the leader of this Oregon program. Year four for her with the Ducks after she started her collegiate experience at Arizona State, transferred after one semester, been in Eugene ever since. What a play by Gamble. Dives, looks at second, throws to first in time. Oh, Hannah Gamble's feeling it again today. Gamble with the grab. I mean, over there at third base, she is making it look easy, but this play made in the 5-6 hole to her knees, looks the runner back, throws from her knees all the way across the diamond for a huge second out. She was a superstar yesterday for the Razorbacks. That solo shot, she also walked twice, made a bunch of great plays in the field. First pitch jumped on by Ariel Carlson. Throws coming home, Luchar is in there safely. The throw from the left fielder, Kramer, soared over Kamenzin's head, and Ariel Carlson gets the party started for the Ducks. Oregon is really hitting the ball square here today. Just trying to keep the ball on the ground, not lifting, not getting underneath, but a sharp hit ball all the way out to left. Reagan Kramer fields it cleanly, but doesn't pull her front shoulder down on the throw and sails it over the head of Kamenzin. Dels has to pick it up. An easy advancement, a score for Oregon, and another runner in scoring position. The run is unearned after Luchar advanced via the E4. For Kai Luchar, it's her 26th run scored of the year, and this is just her 20th start. Mentioned the injury issues she's dealt with this year. Ever since she came back in the starting lineup about a month ago, she has been phenomenal. KK Humphreys against Dels. And a pitch just missed. Fans are not sure about that one. Elizabeth Hammerschmidt is calling the balls and strikes today. Well, early in a game, you have to figure out where the home plate umpire is going to be calling the balls and strikes. That one, obviously, a little bit too low for the home plate umpire, Elizabeth Hammerschmidt. That went right over us here in the broadcast booth, banging off the press box here at Bogle. It's a good point, Jenny, because 
I mean, there's a lot of overlap on the umpire and crews day to day here in a regional, but it's now three different home plate umpires in, in three games. We had Mike Burwell in the first game, Garrett Knowles in the second, now Hammerschmidt in the third. We know that Dell likes the drop ball. We know that she likes the rise ball. She has a change up as well to mix speeds. That drop ball has been dominant, and she was able to pick it up in just a matter of a couple of days, according to head coach Courtney Dyfel. 3 1 Humphreys, hot shot towards short. Italia Rijo is on it, and the freshman puts it away to retire the side. But the Ducks strike first. Oregon is 18 and 2 when scoring, and they go Reagan, Reagan, and Ryland. And Kramer ended it yesterday with that walk-off grand slam in the fifth. And what you see is speed, speed, power right there at the top. Why do they call Reagan Kramer Jimmy? We will explain later on in the show as Reagan Johnson, the slapper and the superstar freshman, takes strike one from Morgan Scott. Johnson, a speedster out of Carnes City, Texas. One of the fastest players in Division I softball and really the only Razorback who's got the green light on the base paths. Well, and she should. With 18 stolen bases, she's perfect on the base pass. And Arkansas, not a team that likes to swipe bats. Johnson, slapper, does it to perfection. And Reagan Johnson is aboard to start the bottom of the first. As a slapper, there's a couple of ways that they like to attack. Sometimes they use the ground, but here Reagan Johnson just punches it through that 5-6 hole, makes it look easy, but as she is in motion with her feet, that is definitely difficult. Now, a lot of speed on the base pass for Arkansas. Johnson is 18 for 18 in her freshman season. She's got 18 of the team's 26 this year. Reagan Kramer stole once as well yesterday, also in the first inning of an 11-0 five-inning win for Arkansas over Harvard. That walk-off grand slam highlighted a career night for Reagan Kramer, a career-high three hits. I mean, it was a huge hit with bases loaded. Reagan Kramer able to come in. It was right inside, made it look easy. Huge home run for Reagan Kramer, seventh of the season. And it was a walk-off grand slam for Arkansas. She hit that at about 11.30 local time here in Fayetteville. Again, the Oregon-Notre Dame game took a little over five hours to complete after a 2.24 rain delay. The one two. A little upstairs from Scott, you see Tara McGowan. Mentioned one of the leaders of this team, the all Pac 12 defensive team catcher, holding it down behind the dish. Kramer ropes it out to right. Reagan and Reagan are both aboard to start things off for the Hawks. Well, and everybody expected that Johnson would be able to go, but she stumbled. And welcome to Bogle Park in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The, everyone joining us on ESPN2. Oregon struck first in the top of the first, but now they're calling the Hogs here in Fayetteville as both Reagans are on base for the Razorbacks, Johnson and Kramer. Tons of speed on first as the Hogs are getting called. Pretty cool atmosphere here in Fayetteville. She's the three-time All-American, Jenny Dalton-Hill. I'm Drew Carter, thrilled to be here at Bogle on a beautiful day for softball. 70 degrees, wind at eight or nine miles an hour, swirling. The berm is packed behind the outfield wall. I don't think you could find a section if you tried. You might have to have some overflow seating on the hill behind right field across Stadium Drive. Well, they did that last week at the SEC tournament. So if you can't find a spot inside, go ahead and go across the street. We've got some tailgaters and it's some more space, green space up on the hill. Morgan Scott in the circle for the Ducks to start today. And Ryland Hedgecock swings through 
The first pitch she sees, Reagan Kramer's at first, Reagan Johnson's at second. Against Morgan Scott, who picked up the four-out save for the Ducks yesterday in a 5-4 win over Notre Dame. Hedgecock skies this one. Deep center field. Hannah Delgado moving back. Both Reagans tag. Johnson goes from second to third as Kramer stays at first. And Razorbacks at the corners with one down here in the bottom of the first. Let's get you caught up on how we got to one nothing. Oregon scoring that first run in the top of the first. Yeah, Kyle Lushar got on with an error. And then it was Ariel Carlson. Hard ground ball out to left. The throw from Reagan Kramer and left was skied. Because of that, it played it an Oregon run, and that's where we sit. These teams matching up in the 1-0 game in the Fayetteville Regional for the second year in a row. Last year, Courtney Difels, Arkansas Razorbacks, beat the Ducks 6-2 in their first meeting and then 9-3 in the regional final as they went undefeated through their regional here at Bogle. Kylie Halverson, the South Dakota State transfer at the plate. Arkansas yesterday, four for seven with runners in scoring position with 10 RBIs. And Johnson has sprinter speed over at third. Well, and what that means is a ball to the outfield is going to score Reagan Johnson easily, even a ball to shallow the shallow outfield. There's a lot of speed over there on third, just 60 feet away from tying the ball game up. Uh, Coach Dyfel says she's probably the fastest player they've had in their program. Yeah. Alverson jumps on this one. Deep right center. Delgado ranging. Ariel Carlson, the right fielder, makes the catch. And Jenny Dalton Hill right on cue. That is plenty deep to score Reagan Johnson to tie this game at one. You're always looking for situational execution in a lineup. And offensively, that was textbook for Arkansas. We know that they like to hit the long ball. This one doesn't have enough to get out. But look at the way that Halverson gets under this ball to drive it to the outfield. Tag box shows that Reagan Johnson over there at third definitely stays in contact with the bag while the ball is caught. So it's an easy advancement, and the game's all tied. Christina Foreman steps in. Throw to first from McGowan, who's got a hose. And back in safely is Reagan Kramer. You know, Re Reagan Johnson, sorry, Jenny, probably could have taken a one count before she left. She's that fast. She's the... Texas State record holder in the 300 meter hurdles. That's the benefit of having speed. It makes it easier on the base pass, and it puts a lot of pressure on a defense to have to perform flawlessly to be able to even have a chance to make a play. One and one to Foreman, who walked twice and scored twice yesterday. Ducks have used 49 different starting lineups now in their 52nd game. 36 and 15 overall on the season, 14 and 10 in Pac-12 play. Fifth in the conference standings, one and done in the inaugural Pac-12 championship. Well, Andrew, you talked about those 49 different lineups. Defensively, they've settled in as of late out on the field. It's just where the batting lineup continues to manipulate to try to find the right pieces in the right places for Oregon. 2-2, two -two, got her. Oregon Scott pulls the string to strike out Christina Foreman. We've got a tie game. Both teams score in the first. Ducks back to the plate. Alyssa Daniel leads things off for Oregon against Shanice Dels. Daniel yesterday a walk and a run scored in that five run second inning for the Ducks, which proved to be the difference. All five runs they scored were with two outs in that second inning, and they beat Notre Dame 5-4. On a transfer coming over from LMU. LMU almost had a huge win yesterday in their regional game. So close, they lost to Florida 3-2. 
actually led heading to the seventh inning, and then the Gators walked it off. Shanice Dels, the Arkansas ace with a one-two. That is rolled toward first. Light work for Kylie Halverson over there on the 3U. Well, 16 regionals, lots of softball to keep track of in case you missed anything. Maybe the biggest story, Jenny, is Grand Canyon goes into L.A. and beats UCLA. That, to me, was surprising. And look at how many run rule wins we've seen across the country going into today. Oklahoma, the run rule for them, not a big surprise. the no hitters though that really stand out knowing that pitching this time of year is of the utmost importance to be able to advance. That one is shot at Natalia Rijo and the freshman squeezes it two down. Rijo's concentration is impressive. We saw a play last inning where she had to really focus to be able to field the ball with a runner running in front of her. This one nabs that one right out of the air, right at her, perfectly placed, an easy play for Rijo. Rio, tremendous in the field. Part of that number one recruiting class that came to Arkansas this year, according to extra inning softball. Here comes Taya Bird. A three run blast in the second inning yesterday. Her second consecutive year with a home run in this regional. Also had a two run pinch hit shot last year against Arkansas. I mean, Taya Bird in this situation could not have done it any better. It was a no-doubter over the wall. Notre Dame could not get anywhere close to it. Got Oregon on the board. It was a big five-run second inning that pushed them to the win. Now on the 10th pitch of that at bat as well. Something about Fayetteville Taya Bird really likes. I don't know if it's Wright's Barbecue or Andy's Custard or what it is, but she feels comfortable here clearly. Well, Oregon was so excited to not just hear their name called, but also to be able to come back to Fayetteville and try to gain some revenge over an opponent who kicked them out of the postseason last year. Yeah, Arkansas beat them twice in this regional last season, and head coach Melissa Lombardi said they feel like they have unfinished business. The word she used was ecstatic when they saw their draw on the selection show. coach about this meeting here in Arkansas last season she said it's actually a perfect place for us knowing that everyone's comfortable the players actually think they copied and pasted <laughs> the eating schedule and the the menus from last year to this year knowing that they were just so close to being able to nip Arkansas Arkansas has lost so many starters from a year ago. Six of the nine have graduated, and so a very different lineup for Arkansas this season. The payoff, again, Bird working a deep at bat in her first at bat. Yesterday was 10 pitches, culminating with that three-run home run. Yeah, to be able to foul off pitches, keeping it bat alive, wait for a pitcher to make a mistake and leave it over the heart of the plate. It's a skill that is innate. That's a difficult one to teach. Got her. On the seventh pitch of the at-bat, Shanice Dels goes low and gets the swinging strikeout. It's a one, two, three, top two for Dels. First strikeout of the game for Dels, and she does it down. It was Donnie Goborn in the circle for South Carolina. She's throwing 70-plus. We've Oof. seen her hit 75 miles an hour this season. But South Carolina unable to take on UC, or unable to get the win against UCF. Uh, Tallahassee Regional is stacked. Hannah Gamel takes strike one from Morgan Scott. Gamel just outstanding yesterday from a small town in Arkansas, and she has been one of the Hogs fan favorites for a couple years now. It's that one on the ground, takes a funky hop toward short, no problem for Paige Sinicki. 
Kasanicki over there at short played that one well, was patient on the hop, did get a little bit of a high bound off the dirt. Good hands though, reins it in, made it look easy. Yeah, both on that Pac-12 All D team. She and Ali Bunker, the second baseman. Casey Hoffman steps in for Arkansas. She had a two RBI double in the first inning yesterday. And I really like the way that Scott started her off with a changeup, knowing that Hoffman likes to be aggressive early in a count. Hoffman, hard hit on the ground. There is Bunker, the other half of that dynamic duo in the middle, and they make the play. What a recovery from Ali Bunker, and a nice pick by KK Humphreys over at first. I mean, that play is made possible by the defense able to come away with some really good backhand plays. Not only is Bunker run through that one, but KK Humphreys, she was a shortstop prior to getting to campus at Oregon. You can tell the glove work on point over there at first. That Duck's one of the best defensive teams in the Pac-12. And we saw that yesterday, some highlight reel defensive plays, kind of like what we're seeing already today. Hannah Delgado in center field robbed Karina Gaskins of Notre Dame in the first, and ultimately that was a one-run win for Oregon. Lauren Kamenzin pops that straight up in the infield, and Humphreys comes in to make the play. Three up, three down, bottom two. Just seven pitches necessary for Morgan Scott. Still tied. They'd be just the second team in World Series history to do it, joining UCLA in the late 80s. Yeah, it's, I don't see anyone standing in the way of Oklahoma, but that's exactly what every team in the country is shooting for. Not just a chance in Oklahoma City, but to be able to raise that trophy at the end of the year. Oregon and Arkansas tied at one here on the top of the third. A great bunt by Paige Sinicki. The Ducks nine hole hitter is aboard. Well, and that's exactly what a nine hole hitter needs to do. Make sure that they put themselves on and flip the lineup over. This drag bunt is perfect. Look how far Hannah Gamel has to travel to get to it. Just too much speed out of the box. Just turns on the afterburners. Huge speed down the line and turns it over for Luchar at the top. And Paige Zanicki has now bunted for a hit in her first at bat each of the two games this year at the Fayetteville Regional and turns it over for Kai Luchar who reached on an air to start the game, stole second, and came around to score on an RBI single from Ariel Carlson. Shanice Dels, so poised in the circle. A fifth year senior, first three years at Tulsa where she was one of the best pitchers in the American Conference, and then came to Arkansas, was the SEC Pitcher of the Year last year. And one of the qualities that makes her so good in the circle is she is just so calm. You never see her feathers ruffled. SEC Pitcher of the Year and Tournament MVP a season ago. Expecting to see her All-American status updated to this year at the end of the season. She's so cool, too. It was fun to catch up with her yesterday. She rolled in. We talked with her and Rylan Hedgecock. Shanice Dels wearing rainbow Crocs. Asked her, how many pairs of Crocs do you have? She said, just two, technically three. She left one at home in Oklahoma City with her mom. So really, they belong to her mom now. Yeah, she says she wears them all the time. And so she thinks that her mom has probably claimed that yes. pair. So she's down to two now. There is no doubt about her status on this team this year. She is the certified ace. A 1-2 to Luchar. And the leadoff hitter stays alive. Well, Luchar, you mentioned it earlier, Drew, that she missed the beginning of the year. She slid in practice and hurt her hand. And so she was out in terms of being able to hit at the beginning of the season. Was not cleared to play until April 1st. And they missed her in the lineup. Having her back at the top has really helped the Ducks be more potent. Goes down here on a swinging strikeout. Shanice Dels starting to feel it. Last two outs have been via the swinging K. 
Well, and they're off that drop ball. You know a slapper loves to have a steep angle on their barrel approach to the ball. With that steep angle, they are vulnerable to a drop ball. Shanice Dels exposes that weakness and gets her second strikeout of the game. It brings in Allie Bunker, who grounded out to the left side of the infield last time. And here she grounds out into a 6-4 fielder's choice as Riho goes to Foreman. And they get the lead runner, Sinicki, at second, two down. Well, and I was hoping that Riho was going to take this one herself over there at second. She was kind of far away, but with that transition to Foreman, not able to make it cleanly. They do get the lead runner, but only one out because they cannot make that transition happen. And Allie Bunker stands at first, six for seven, stealing bases this year. Her roommate, Tara McGowan, steps in. It was funny talking with those two yesterday. They feel like they're elders on the team, self-described. They like to watch Law & Order SVU. Right back at the pitcher, and Dells gloves it, throws to first, and that'll do it for the top of the third. Shanice Dells rolling for the Hogs. When we return, we will talk with Oregon's head coach. If they call the Hogs again, I'm just going to shut up and let everyone listen. <laughs> it, it is pretty cool. A great tradition and an awesome crowd on hand today. Natalia Riho, the nine-hole hitter for the Razorbacks, hitting for the first time today. Last night, 0 for 2, did reach on a hit by pitch. She was actually hit twice, but one of them was challenged by Harvard's coach, Jenny Allard. You had two challenges before the sixth inning, after which the video reviews are initiated by the umpires. Natalia Riho, that Riho last name is probably familiar to baseball fans. Her cousin Jose was the 1990 World Series MVP with the Cincinnati Reds, and both parents played diamond sports at a high level as well. And she goes down on three pitches here against Morgan Scott. So Scott's heating up. A strikeout to end the first, and now one to begin the third. I mean, this pitch, she's going to the rise ball here at the end of this at bat. Had a little extra juice on it there at the end. It looked like her velo popped a little bit harder on that pitch for the strikeout. Back at the top of the lineup, Reagan Johnson fouls off the first pitch she sees. So, including the sacrifice fly for Kylie Halverson in the first, Scott has now retired seven Razorbacks in a row. Yeah, you're seeing Scott settle in really nicely in the circle, getting confident with that ball up in the zone against the Razorbacks. Defensively, the Ducks are pulled in, knowing that Johnson likes to tap and go. She did use a ball to the outfield in her last at bat, but the defense challenging Johnson. Reagan Johnson does have some pop. A slugging percentage of 427. He's got seven extra base hits on the year. Yeah, double double-digit multi-hit games, and she's the one player that has the green light on this staff. Johnson bounces it back to the circle. Scott's got to hurry and does. Two down. Defense in the circle, such an important part of the game, and I love the way that Morgan Scott attacked that ball quickly to get the throw to first base. You have to work quick to get Johnson, and they did. Here comes maybe the hottest bat in the lineup for Arkansas, Reagan Kramer. One for one today, singled on a line drive in the first inning. And last night, she ended it with a walk-off grand slam in the fifth to lock up an 11-0 five-inning win for the Razorbacks over Harvard. Well, and on that grand slam, Drew, we heard them chanting. We couldn't really make out what they were saying, but as she was going around the bases, the, the team was cheering Jimmy, and it didn't make <laughs> any sense. We heard in their post-game interview that she was supposed to be a boy. They thought they were going to name her Jimmy. 
but not able to get on base there. She might think that one was supposed to be foul, but it stayed <laughs> fair going over the bag. Tournament. Bases four, five, and six in this Oregon lineup, and Ariel Carlson continues her hot start today. At the RBI single in the first, then starts with a single here in the fourth. Well, Carlson obviously seeing the ball really well, attacks early in this at bat. You know that Oregon wants to jump on Dels early. They don't want to give her a chance to start playing with the strike zone. K.K. Humphreys steps in and takes ball one. Oregon's got three hits today, two of them on the first pitch, those singles by Carlson, and then the other one was an 0-1 count. Paige Sinicki on the bunt single last inning, so they have been aggressive. Corners of the infield squeezed in again as that one is ripped right by Gamble at third. Into left where Kramer is on it. A base knock for K.K. Humphreys. Two ducks on the pond to start this fourth. I see what you did there, Drew. But K.K. Humphreys, her first hit of the regional, and she's been hitting the ball hard. It's just been going right at people. Typically, Gamble challenges hitters and is able to come away with it, but she is too close for that hot shot off the bat of Humphreys. Can we get Hannah Gamble a face mask? Yeah. Worried watching her up here. Time asked for by Melissa Lombardi, head coach over at third. Her counterpart across the way at first is Nikki Reagan, assistant in her second year, one of the best players in Oregon program history. So Daniel grounded out to first base to lead off the second. LMU transfer holds back on the butt. And that is called a ball by Elizabeth Hammerschmidt. Some Arkansas faithful in disbelief. Well, and you're still seeing some manipulation of the zone. That is a really nice spot in terms of height, but perhaps off the plate enough for Hammerschmidt to call it a ball. 2 0. Oh. This time, Daniel does lay down the bunt, but straight back, foul ball. Well, and you're seeing a lot of aggressive leads by Oregon right now. It's bringing Kamins in out of her legs, trying to keep everybody in their places. As a team, Oregon has 72 stolen bases right now trying to put themselves with two runners in scoring position by moving runners. Daniel did try to put that bunt down to move the runners, but we're seeing some really hard, aggressive leads at first and second by Oregon. After a brief congregation, Coach Lombardi and the hitter, Alyssa Daniel. Daniel is back in that lefty box. Check out that Arkansas infield as Daniel pulls back the bunt again and takes ball three. Well, and the reason they're able to be so aggressive on the bases is because as Daniel squares to turn, it takes the shortstop over to third, and it requires the second baseman to come over to cover at first base. So these base runners are able to take advantage of what's going on at the plate with less than two strikes. Daniel lays it down. This one stays fair as Kamenzin picks it up and throws to first. But Daniel gets the job done, moving both runners over. So Carlson's at third, Humphreys at second. And I thought perhaps Oregon would go ahead and hit away. But in this position, Alyssa Daniel, beautiful bunt, leaves it right by the plate, which requires Kamenzin to come out and get it. Foreman fields it nicely on the catch at first. Very clean play, but now Ducks with two and runner with runners in scoring position. And Lauren Cammons in the freshman catcher, playing that with conviction, wasting no time. 
And with the speed of Oregon, you have to make quick decisions. Part of being a good defender is making sure you know where the play should go if you get the ball. And a Delgado, her count is one and one. Delgado, a line out to the shortstop, Riho in the second. As part of a one, two, three, second inning for Dels. In some trouble here, one down, two in scoring position for Oregon. He's not getting that spot on the outside corner. Couple Razorback pitchers warming up. Down the left field line, Hannah Kamen's in, twin sister of Lauren, the catcher, who was dynamite yesterday, and then Callie Turner also. So two lefties in the bullpen for Arkansas. 2-1 Delgado right through the wickets of Gamble at third. One run is in. Another holds up at third. Delgado trying to take second, and she is nailed. But Hannah Delgado with an RBI single. Brings home Ariel Carson. The Ducks take the lead, but a nice play by Gamble to get her at second. Well, and to be able to rebound after this ball goes right through Gamble's legs, she is heads up enough to recognize that there is an advancement from first to second. So this ball goes right through the legs of Gamble, reads it as the throw might go through, but too aggressive on the bases. Delgado gets thrown out at second by Gamble with a heads up play after the cut. Taya Bird struck out to end the second. And a hot shot toward the hot corner. Gamble has this one and retires the side. But Oregon with another rifle. And coach, we see the fans on the berm. It's a beautiful day for softball. For everyone at home right now, can you just explain what it's like here in this environment? Well, they need to come check it out for themselves. <laughs> I'm going to leave a little mystery. You can look around and know that it's a really cool atmosphere, but it's something you got to come experience yourself. Wow, look at you with the teaser. I love that. When it comes to Hannah Gamble, we know that she's been just an experienced performer for you. She's really challenging defense, challenging players defensively. Why is that up the line at third? Well, she's fearless. Um, she's fearless and she has great reactions. So, um, so she likes to get in their face um, and make, make them feel her presence. All right, Coach Deifel, thanks for doing this. Best of luck. All right, thanks. We pick. Yeah, I've been surprised by how far up the line Hannah Gamble has been playing in this regional. She is challenging hitters, even power hitters. She is making sure that her presence is known up the line over there at third. She swings a heavy bat. We saw her start the year as a catcher back behind the dish, but one of the most passionate players for Arkansas. Coach thought she was stifled a little bit back behind the plate and put her out at third. Ryland Hedgecock jumps on the first pitch. Shallow right, lost it in the sun. Allie Bunker, the second baseman, couldn't see it. And Rylan Hedgecock is aboard. She was looking straight into the sun. And so it's a single for Hedgecock. And that's the worst feeling. You see it off the bat, you're able to track it, and then last second it goes right into the sun. She does the right thing by trying to shade her eyes with her glove but it goes right into the middle of the sun. She's lucky it didn't hit her on the top of the head. That's gotta be the worst feeling in the world, right? When you lose it in the sun like that? It is, and the sunglasses are coming out a pitch too late. I mean, I played at Arizona. I could not play with sunglasses on. It just made me feel too removed from the play, so. Kudos to these Ducks out there on the right side who've got those shades on. Kylie Halverson tags that deep left. Goodbye! A one-pitch, two-run blast from Kylie Halverson. And the Hogs are back in front. When we talked to Courtney Dyfel about Kylie Halverson, she said this is a player that has huge power. She's a big swinger, and when she stepped on campus this season, she was immediately respected. Why? Well, it's because of situations like this. That was a no-doubt home run 
Look at this, power stays in her leg so well, doesn't let it leak out over that front side. Sits in that back leg, lets her hands work, uses her hips, huge home run, and puts the hogs back on top. So Arkansas with their first home run today. They had a couple last night. Kylie Halverson showing off the pop. But Drew, this is what you expect in the postseason. As a pitcher, you cannot leave a ball big to any player one through nine. That ball was left right in the spot where Halverson could capitalize on it. You have to hit corners. You have to have a change of speed to be able to be successful in the postseason. But this ball was absolutely tattooed. It almost cleared the second fence out there and left. Huge home run. Well, and that home run, Drew, actually pushes Halverson into double-digit home runs for the season, gives the team 66 home runs. And she stepped up. And now she's got all three RBIs today for Arkansas. A sack fly in the first, and a two-run missile in the fourth. Which one do you think got out of here faster, that one or Hannah Gamble's from last night? I think that one got higher than yeah. Hannah Gamble's yesterday. Both of them got out of here in a hurry. Like, we know that Kylie Halverson's good, and I, and I know that we've got Christina Foreman up right now, but Kylie Halverson set the single-season record at her last school. 19 home runs in two different seasons. Came over from South Dakota State, who's been a welcome addition to this Arkansas program as Christina Foreman draws the five pitch walk. And Bogle Park is alive now as Hannah Gamble steps in. to the first walk issued by either side today. Morgan Scott faces Gamble. And that was a swing looking to hit the parking lot. You know that Gamble was not happy with the air. It wasn't an error, but the ball that went through her legs last inning. So right there looking like she wanted to go ahead and make a huge statement in her first swing with action over in the bullpen with Reagan Breedlove for Oregon warming. Gamble again swinging over toward the dugout diving attempt and Humphreys can't bring it in. What an effort by the first baseman KK Humphreys. Well and I can't brag on Humphreys enough to be able to have a shortstop converted into a first baseman is so important defensively because she's so aggressive she's used to being able to play up the middle but now over at first base almost gets that grab in foul territory. Gamble ropes it, just foul up the left field line. Well, and that's one thing about Hannah Gamble that is so impressive is she is not afraid to go down and get a ball. She doesn't necessarily elevate, but when she squares it up down low in the zone, the ball absolutely takes off at contact. Really good discipline up in the zone on that rise ball that Scott is trying to get the swing and miss on. There's the one, two. Gamble swings through it, a foul tip squeezed by Tara McGowan. All Pac-12 defensive team catcher for the first out in the fourth. This pitch down in the zone where some of those others had been. Nice curveball outside corner. Got to give props to Tara McGowan back there behind the plate to squeeze that one up and get the strikeout. McGowan, who head coach Melissa Lombardi says is like an extra coach out there. Casey Hoffman swings through the heat. On well, that nod of the head was a signal to the dugout that she knew she needed to wait up on that one. But when you see the way that the hitter in front of you was tagging things, you want to do the same thing. Got a little over aggressive on that pitch. 
That one gets through McGowan. There goes Foreman. She'll hold up at second on a wild pitch. Well, and we know that Morgan Scott has a changeup in her arsenal, but this one gets away from her. Underneath the glove of Tara McGowan gets to that block a little bit late. Foreman reads it well. It's an easy stand-up. I thought she might try to advance to third, but not enough time. McGowan got it back too quick. It's the 11th wild pitch of the year for Scott. One goes in the stands here at Bogle. Picked up on a one-hop. We saw a great catch last night. Great catch. In the in foul territory. That's right. We saw a great, lots, lots of great, of great catch catches on the, on the field. Yes. One, two. That's in there for a called strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Morgan Scott, four on the afternoon. Well, this is a fabulous response for Morgan Scott to be able to come away settling back down. Gave up the home run, walked the next batter, and then back-to-back -back strikeouts, able to calm the emotions out in the circle and start dealing again. Now Scott, the senior, against the freshman Lauren Kamen's in. First pitch swinging. On the ground to Allie Bunker. That'll do it for the fourth, but Arkansas has see her back on the WNBA floor, leading the Mercury in scoring, and you get a chance to see her again tomorrow afternoon. Oregon now down by one after Arkansas scored two runs in the bottom of the fourth, and Paige Sinicki, for the second time today, leads off an inning with a single. I mean, how important is it to be able to have that number nine hitter flip things over with putting yourself on there at the bottom of the lineup? Paige Sinicki last time, drag bunt to get on there, line drive to left. So versatile at the bottom of the lineup for Oregon. Guy Luchar, leadoff hitter, takes strike one from Shanice Dels. And so many different tools for Kai Lushar at the top of the lineup. Able to drag, touch, tap and go, hard slap, chop slap. Right now with the defense playing her even with the bag, what's she gonna do? There's Gamble, it goes over her head, bounces off the shortstop, Riho. Lushar safe at first. Sinicki safe at second. And that is Lushar's first hit today. She also reached down an air. Well, we've talked about how Hannah Gamble is really squeezing these slappers, but I, it's coming back to bite her a couple of times in this game. It paid off well last night in their matchup against Harvard, but here today, the lack of the ability to get that ball and have some time makes it difficult for her to make those plays. Allie Bunker steps in, takes ball one. And it's as a chop slap, Gamel in a little bit too much. Ricochets off of Riho's glove, the shortstop as well. Let's go down as a single for Kyle Lushar, who's got tons of wheels at first, so does Sinicki at second. Bunker got a piece of that butt. And it bounced off the catcher's glove, Kamen's in, so both runners did not hit the ball, excuse me, no contact, so. As it bounced off Kamenzin's glove, both runners live, and they move into scoring position. Well, you see hitters will sometimes square to distract a catcher. It looked like that. What hap that's what happened to Lauren Kamenzin back behind the dish. That is, a, that is a ball that she catches 99 times out of 100. But as it rides in on the heel of her glove, it ricochets off and heads up base running for Oregon to put two of them now in st scoring position. They both advance on the passed ball. Bunker 0 for 2 today. 1-1, one, one, waits on it. Riho at short, gobbles it up. That looked telegraphed right at the freshman. I mean, this ball was absolutely smoked. Frozen rope, but right at Riho. She's playing in because of the runner on third base. Had she been playing back a little bit, that ball could have died, taken a little top spin drop to her, but with her being so tight with the runner on third base, that's an easy play to make. Dyfel out of the dugout to talk with Elizabeth Hammerschmidt. And Dels will hand the ball 
to Hannah Kamenzin. So Shanice Dels on the top of the fifth with one down, two runners in scoring position for Oregon. And Kamenzin, who was the star last night in the circle, gets the ball for the second day in a row. We will introduce the freshman next. Speed, that changeup is definitely a difference maker for her in the circle. I'm expecting to see that a lot out of the circle for her. Five-inning complete game shutout for her last night against Harvard. And an 11-0 win for the Razorbacks. And Kamenzin's NCAA tournament debut. Just one hit allowed. Tara McGowan shows button, pulls it back. Kamenzin does not get the strike call. Well, the fans are not happy about that call, but with the ball down in the zone, remember, that ball does look off the plate. Good receive by her sister, Lauren, back behind the plate, brings it back. But I think that's a really good call back behind the dish. And remember, this umpire now has to get used to a new pitcher, a different look coming out of the circle, not from the right side, now from the left. Gowan walks on four pitches. So Hannah Kamenzin's first opponent goes to first and loads up the bases with one down here in the top of the fifth. Well, and that's something she didn't do last night. She did not give up a walk in her complete game win yesterday against Harvard. She had two strikeouts in that game yesterday. So the free passes, you definitely don't want to give them up, knowing that you sit in the heart of the lineup for Oregon. Now, if Arkansas's catcher, Lauren Kamenzin, sees anything that the pitcher is doing that they might want to correct, there are no holds barred in this relationship. There is full-on accountability. Twin sisters from Nebraska. Lauren is older by 19 minutes, and she caught the entire one-hit shutout that her sister threw last night. Now, those difficult conversations, something that makes Courtney Dyfel so excited for this battery and their future. Ariel Carlson now ahead 2-0. Carlson 2-for-2 two two today, a single in the first, an RBI single, and then singled and scored in the fourth. That's in there, Kamenzin's first strike. Coach Dyfel told us that low and ha, as they call them, just two of the coolest individuals ever. So kind and lighthearted. And there's the changeup. That is why Kamenzin is in this game. We did not see that changeup come via Janice Dels very often, but that is a nasty pitch. The 2-2. Two -two. Missed it off. Carlson stays alive. Well, it's the changeup that makes that foul ball happen. Right there, Carlson way behind in her timing because of that mix of speed that she had just seen in the pitch before. Same thing, Drew. That change of speed is in the head of Carlson. It was so nasty. It was a hittable pitch, but she was so clutched up because of the change of speed that it's now in her head as the count sits even. Two balls, two strikes. Bases loaded for Oregon, trailing by one. Here in the winner's bracket. Winner here moves on to the regional final. Carlson stays alive again. What did we see for Oregon yesterday in their win over Notre Dame? Back-to-back -back walks, followed by a long at bat for Taya Bird, which ultimately ended up in a three-run home run. That was the momentum shifter for the Ducks and ultimately a five-run inning and a 5-4 win. Eighth pitch of the at bat, one of the biggest pitches of the game, and it barely missed. That pitch was so close too close to take in my opinion that is a beautiful pitch that should have actually found its way out of the ballpark but it gets rung up as a ball payoff carlson rolls it that's through one run is in second run coming home 
Ducks take the lead. Throw to third is not in time. Everybody's safe. Oregon back in the driver's seat. What a game for Ariel Carlson. Three for three and two more ribbies. Ariel Carlson battled throughout that entire at bat, fouling off pitches, deceived by the changeup, and then blasts a ball through the 5 6 hole. Played well by Reagan Kramer out there and left. It's a good throw home, not in time, and so much speed on the bases. They simply replace runners in scoring position at second and third. And still just one down. Some Boo Birds came out after that two RBI single. Fans here at Bogle thought. Hannah Kamenzen should have had a strikeout. And those two runs do belong to Shanice Dels. KK Humphrey singled in her last at bat, last inning. Well, and Drew, with such a dynamic changeup, I was expecting to see Cammons in throw it perhaps a little bit more than what we're seeing. She threw a beautiful one in the last at bat that got in the head of Carlson, but has not used it since. Cammons in was so dialed in last night. A one hit shutout in her first NCAA tournament game. Making up that battery with her twin sister, Lauren. to have been so key for the Razorbacks this year. Said they would be excited to get any playing time as freshmen. They've been huge cogs in this Arkansas system. Well, you can see a two-strike approach in for KK Humphreys now, holding that bat out to prevent a huge load in that back or pre-motion. So with a two-strike approach, he's looking to just punch this ball through the infield. The defense is playing even with the bag, knowing that they've got a duck on third, just 60 feet away from scoring. One, two to Humphreys. Waits on it, pokes it, deep left, and foul. They cleared the fence just to the left of the foul pole. Yeah, just a little ahead of that pitch. Sometimes when you shorten up and go right to the ball. It makes you a little bit early, but that a beautiful approach with two strikes by KK Humphreys. Humphreys, this one stays fair down the third base line. A little confusion. Gamble throws to first. Now the home plate umpire is supposed to make that call. to sort this out. The runner came home to score. Tara McGowan. And the batter, Humphreys, is at first. When on the batted ball, The umpire makes the fair call there. I don't know where Hannah Gamble gets confused in this. It is clearly called fair by the home plate umpire, but the hitch in the giddy up for Hannah Gamble makes everybody pause. This is a good call. Gamble does get this ball in fair territory. She looks like she's going to throw home, but then pauses. Everyone goes into confusion at that point. She might have been confused because Carlson wasn't moving. Looked like it definitely hit foul at first, then rolled back in. And now the home plate umpire, Elizabeth Hammerschmidt, heads over to the review area. And they'll communicate with the replay center outside of Pittsburgh. Well, and Drew, this is a situation where you're waiting on the home plate umpire to make a call. As a defender, your job is to carry out every play, regardless of fair or foul. So as Gamble gets this ball, I don't understand why she doesn't go ahead and make the play. You cannot wait in a situation like this, especially with the runner on third. Throw home, throw first, but make a throw. That is the problem in this play right here. 
So much confusion, but the call was made at home plate as of a fair ball. So play the game or play the hit out. If it is a foul ball, go ahead and let him bring everybody back, but never hesitate, never hold on to the ball. Always finish your defensive play. Everybody was confused. I think just because Carlson was, was still at home plate, you saw McGowan hold up as she ran home from third. The only thing I can think of here is if it hit off Carlson's foot while she was still in the batter's box. And so the confusion is KK Humphreys off the bat. Does it hit her foot? And it looks like it against Notre Dame. And now she hits that one off her lower left leg and has to head back to the batter's box. So the count is one and two after the foul ball. Still two ducks in scoring position and still a one run lead for Oregon. Anna Kamen's in's one, two, and again, Humphreys hits it off herself. Where's the nearest ice bath? I'm sure she's going to find it after this game. I mean, you, you mentioned it this time. It's off her right foot. So not only did she wear it off the left side, but now she's worn it off the right side. The Hogs not happy with this, what they call delay of game, but you've got to give yourself a second to be able to recover after you've worn a ball off of your back toe. That's where all your power has to come from as a hitter. So until you get that feeling back in that foot, it's hard to stand back in and be able to drive the ball. She has fouled off five straight pitches. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. A battle between the freshman Hannah Kamenzin and the junior KK Humphreys. That's in there, and that got her. No, it hit the knob, hit the of, the knob bat. of the bat. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is she wearing a magnet? <laughs> Just so gritty in the box. This one in on the hands and hits the bottom of the of the bat, the knob underneath her hands. So six straight fouls. Can we get some bubble wrap shipped to Fayetteville for KK Humphreys? Another one, too. Yes. Oh, they got her. A delayed strike three call from Hammerschmidt. And Melissa Lombardi, Oregon's head coach, yelling down the third baseline, no way. Arguing balls and strikes can get you thrown out of the game. KK Humphrey surprised by that call. It was a verbal right away, but a delayed signal as the crowd waited to hear what that call was going to be. A nine pitch at bat ends with a looking strikeout for Hannah Kamenzin. And Coach Lombardi will go with a pinch hitter here. Valerie Wong. Long pinch hit last night as well. 0 for 1 against Notre Dame. A 261 hitter this year. Takes ball one. This has been a crazy inning. Oregon has had to manipulate a couple of different calls that the umpires have made, and it really messes with your emotions as a player. So in the box, you've got to make sure that you calm your heartbeat. Make sure that your emotions are in check and attack each pitch. Hammondson catches that outside corner, one and one. Long flight out to center last night. Even though Hannah Kamenzin is only a freshman, do not feel like she's phased by this moment, and it probably helps to have your twin sister behind the plate. Well, this battery definitely gritty. Have been difference makers in stepping on campus. I'm excited to see the rest of their careers. Again, they are honest with each other. 
earlier this year against Mississippi State. Hannah gave up a home run that was ultimately called back due to a runner leaving early. And Lauren was like, you can't put the pitch there. Just told her straight up. And that one misses downstairs. So the base is loaded again for Oregon as Valerie Wong draws a pinch hit walk. And with two down here in the top of the fifth, Hannah Delgado will bat with the bases juiced. Delgado, an RBI single, her last at bat in the fourth. She takes strike one. Delgado with a huge play to start off the game yesterday, robbing a home run by Karina Gaskins, brought it back into the park, but now another pressure-filled situation. Every pitch is so tense. Every pitch elicits a reaction from the fans here at Bogle. It is a big crowd. It is an engaged crowd. 1-1. It's in there, one and two. Valerie Wong at first, Ariel Carlson at second, Tara McGowan at third. Ducks by one in the top of the fifth. Winner to the regional final, one, two. Just missed. These fans are so engaged. I am loving how they are hanging on every pitch. Cammons in ready. The 2-2. Two -two. That is poked through for a base knock. One run comes home for the Ducks, and they hold up at third. Hannah Delgado comes up clutch again. Back-to-back -back innings with an RBI single for her, and it's a two-run lead for Oregon. And that's just textbook softball, putting the ball in play and make the defense work. With the defense pulled so close to the plate, it prevents a lot of lateral movement by the defense. And so because of that, a hard hit shot goes down as a hit in the books and another run. Taya Bird, who's been mega clutch in this Fayetteville Regional the last two years. A two run pinch hit home run against these Razorbacks last season. And then a three-run homer against Notre Dame yesterday in the second inning. Takes inside, 2-0. Oregon today is 4 of 10 with five RBIs with runners in scoring position. Well, and Drew, these are not bad pitches. She is just barely missing the strike zone of the home plate umpire. Takes strike one, shaving that inside corner. That kind of says it all right there, Jenny. Yeah, Oregon has had so many more opportunities with runners in scoring position. And that miss downstairs, three balls and a strike with the bases loaded. Taya Bird has been clutch swinging the bat. Will she be clutch? Keeping the bat on her shoulder here. Another ball would bring home another run. That is in there. Cat runs full. Again, Melissa Lombardi, head coach over at third, saying, no way. I mean, that looked like a pitch that she could attack, but that down pitch has not been consistently called since Kamenzen has entered the game in the circle. The payoff. And Bird. Hits it off for something. We got some wounded ducks in this inning. <laughs> Ball's coming right back at him in the box. Well, and it's not Kamenzin that's hitting them. They're fouling it off themselves. But Kamenzin not afraid to take the ball inside, jam up these hitters, and that's what's happening. They're getting the ball in on the handle rather than exploding the barrel out to contact out in front. Anna Kamenzin has thrown 38 pitches already. The next one will be the 45th total pitch of the inning for Arkansas pitchers. It's a payoff to Taya Burr. 
Well, Drew, that's what you have to do right there. Do not leave it up to the home plate umpire. So far, it's been inconsistent since Kamenzen has entered the game. And so you have to take the game into your own hands right here. Pitch low, attack, hit it foul. Pitch high, go ahead, foul it off. But keep the at-bat alive by being aggressive. Bird jumps on this, tattoos it deep to left. Gone! Another T-Bird blast for the Ducks in Fayetteville. Grand slam, Taya Bird. Huge home run by Taya Bird. And in this situation, I thought for sure that Kamenzen would go to the off speed. She does, but Taya Bird was ready. Absolutely crushed that one, lifting it deep over the left field wall. Oregon with a huge inning now sits six runs ahead. So after hitting that home run and a 10 pitch at bat yesterday, Bird, a seven pitch at bat that ends in a grand slam. And Hannah Kamenzin passes the ball to Callie Turner. The Ducks have blown this thing wide open. A seven run top of the fifth for Oregon. They lead by six. Taya Bird celebrating a lot here at Bogle Park that pitch down in the zone not a lot of velocity on it she capitalized on that off speed and gave Oregon a huge bolt of electricity and also resulted in a change in the circle we now see Callie Turner in the circle for Arkansas extremely positive has mentally grown since being here on campus since transferring from Tennessee last season doubled her innings from 26 last year to 53 this year What's the scouting report on Turner? Yeah, she's got a dominant changeup. Good velocity, can touch 70 miles an hour, but it's that change of speed that I want to see with that velocity from the left side. Paige Sinicki started off this inning with a single, and as the Ducks bat around, Sinicki is two for two in this top of the fifth. Yeah, three for three on the day, but two for two in the inning. I mean, talk about a hot bat sitting down here in the bottom of the lineup. First four innings, only able to put up two runs. Fifth inning alone, seven run blast. And this is what we saw yesterday against Notre Dame when Oregon scored all five of their runs in the second inning. It's a team that's capable of erupting. Lushar, leadoff hitter, takes ball one downstairs. I think these fans here at Bogle Park are stunned. Yeah, it caught quiet quick. I mean, we saw a lot of emotion coming out of them with that crazy play by Gamble at third in this inning. But now, everybody quiet. Field squeezed in again for the slapper Luchar. 2 0. And I'm so impressed with these batters for Oregon. They've been attacking early in the count, being patient, fouling pitches off, and all of their runs have come with two strikes on every one of those batters. Unfazed by the moment, these Ducks. 2 0. Luchar on the ground towards second. Foreman's got it, not in time. Kai Lushar can fly, and not just because she's a duck. One of the <laughs> fastest players in the Pac-12 legs it out, and the inning continues. Well, and at second base, this ball, you think she should just go right to second, but look at the speed, and there's no one covering up, so she can't get there. It has to be a throw over to first base. Kai Lushar, playing it like a track athlete, beats it out down the line. So that's two singles for Kai Lushar in the fifth inning as well, just like Paige Zanicki. 
Yeah, Arkansas is not the only team in this game that has a track star batting leadoff. Reagan Johnson, super speedy. We'll say the same thing for Kyle Lushar, who, even though she missed a lot of time, didn't bat until April, is hitting almost 450 this year. Yeah, dangerous bat at the top of the lineup, and she's followed up by Allie Bunker, player that leads the team in batting average, also with double-digit home runs, has been a consistent starter for the Ducks her entire career. Coach Lombardi told us, Allie Bunker, stop, clutch. The person you want when the bases are loaded, game's on the line, she will not flinch. After watching Oregon in this inning, like you said, Jenny, all seven RBIs coming with two strikes, I feel like she could use that description for a lot of her players. Well, and a quality pitch out of the hand of a pitcher is one that comes on the same line or the same tunnel to a batter and then has late sharp break. That ball out of the hand of Callie Turner was such a late release that as a batter, you don't even have to hesitate. The ball will, st the bat will stay on your shoulder. Bunker pokes it, shallow right center. It's down. Sinicki flying home. Luchar into third safely. Bunker to second. It's a 10 spot for the Ducks. Eight of them in the top of the fifth. Allie Bunker brings another one home. The floodgates have opened and Oregon has responded in a big way, able to capitalize in pressure-filled situations. And right now, Arkansas cannot find a way to get the Ducks out, continuing to put the ball in play where the Razorbacks are not. Another one finds the grass, another run plated by Oregon. Tara McGowan is the 13th Duck to bat in this fifth inning. Kelly Turner just trying to stem the tide. End an inning where Oregon has scored eight runs. Man, sucked the life right out of Bogle Park. Oregon has gone from down one entering this inning to potentially in run rule territory as they lead by seven now in the top of the fifth. You got to lead by eight or more after five or more full innings. This inning has lasted almost 40 minutes with the pitching changes. Two of them. Dell started it, then Kamen's in, now Turner. Well, Callie Turner in the circle has a really good changeup too. We have not seen it in this appearance for her, but Right now would be a really good time to be able to pull that out, roll a little ground ball, help her team get out of the inning. Way up high and inside. Three and one. Been the one bugaboo for Callie Turner this year is the control. That's actually three and two, excuse me. 32 walks coming in to today as McGowan stays alive. Yeah, and that strikeout to walk ratio, definitely not far enough apart. 45 strikeouts on the season, 32 walks. You like to see those numbers drastically different. And so far, just too many walks improved from last year, but definitely not where you need, it to, see, need to see it this season. McGowan skies this one, left center field. Johnson fighting the sun and makes the catch. 13 batters, eight runs, 40 minutes, three. Make sure you stay tuned between games. Seven innings live will have you covered. Natalia yeah. Rijo steps on the first pitch, high to right field, caught at the warning track. Ariel Carlson doing at the plate and in right field. Well, you're not playing at home. The Ducks able to really show out defensively on a ballpark they're not super familiar with. They haven't played here in oh, in a year. This ball off the bat, really high. Thought it might have had a chance to get out of here, but Riho or Carlson at the wall. 
able to bring that one back. Hard to tell, but that might have been their second home run robbery of this tournament. In center field, Hannah Delgado robbed Karina Gaskins of Notre Dame yesterday, and now Ariel Carlson steals one from Italia Rijo. Reagan Johnson, leadoff hitter for the Hogs. One for two today with a single and a run scored in the first. Bunted over to third. The Ducks are on point right now. That's Taya Bird at third for, for the 5 3. But back in that first batter, Italia Rijo off the bat. You thought it might have had a chance to get out of here. I think that one would have hit the wall. I don't know that it had the distance to get out, but what a good job by the right fielder, Ariel Carlson, to make that catch on the warning track. The sun in her eyes, no problem. By the way, I should correct myself, there's a 5-4 as the second baseman bunker came over to cover first with Humphrey squeezed in on the bunk. Hope you're scoring in pencil. <laughs> we both do. You have to be a maniac to score in pen, right? But we know some people who do it. We do. Not going to call anyone out, Mike Cousins. Cough, cough. <laughs> really, really, it's a compliment. If you can do that, that is crazy impressive. I feel like Harvard fans can score in Pat. Best and the brightest. And we'll see him next. We will. We'll take on Notre Dame in an elimination game scheduled for a 5.30 start Eastern time, 4.30 local. As Reagan Kramer swings and ropes it through the middle. A two out base knock for Reagan Kramer. She's two for three today after a career high three hits last night. Ryland Hedgecock, one for two today. Singled to start the fourth and came around to score. And that's a really good receive by Tara McGowan back behind the dish. Does a good job of receiving and holding. Doesn't try to move that glove a ton. I like a very quiet catcher that gives an umpire a good look. 3-0 on that outside edge. And the key to framing pitches is making sure they don't know you're framing pitches, right? <laughs> well, it needs to be more of a wrist move than an arm move. And McGowan doing a pretty good job of receiving and holding in her spot. In there as well, count runs full. Hedgecock with a smile as she heads back to the batter's box. Well, and a good catcher is one that can buy pitches off the off the plate. McGowan, I think, bought that one pretty solidly. Hedgecock hard on the ground, skips over the glove of the diving Humphreys at first. It dribbles into right, Razorbacks at the corners with two down in the bottom of the fifth. On the approach of Hedgecock in this at bat, she was swinging hard early, but then with this pitch off the plate, she doesn't want to leave it up to the umpire, allows it to get deep and punches it down that right field line. Over there at first base, KK Humphreys needs to remember where that pitch is going to be able to defend that line. Kylie Halverson has been the most effective Arkansas batter today. A sack fly in the first and a two-run homer in the fourth. She's driven in all three Razorback runs. Ready, 
Morgan Scott still dealing in the circle for Oregon. Back in there pitching after 40 minutes of rest as her team exploded for eight runs in the top half of this fifth. The one, two. Got her! Tickles the outside edge. And Morgan Scott strands Razorbacks on the corners. World Series only on the ESPN family of networks as Ariel Carlson leads things off for the Ducks in this top of the sixth against Callie Turner back in the circle for the Razorbacks. Alongside Jenny Dalton Hill, I'm Drew Carter. If you were to rank the best ways to watch the regional action with 16 different sites, number one would be if, you, if you're the guy from the Matrix who had all those TVs in his office, you need at least 16 screens. Number two would be seven innings live. Or, as Courtney Diefel said, go in person and watch That's right. it live. And you can see seven innings live coming up between our games here on ESPN2. Chris Button will have you covered in the studio. Jess Mendoza, Michelle Smith. It's like red zone for softball. If you love this sport, you got to check it out. It's just a complete tornado of action <laughs> on a day like today, knowing that half the field is going home. A two in there. And Callie Turner starts the top of the six with a backwards K. When you look at the timing for this game, it was rolling right along, and then we hit the fifth inning where the top half, almost 40 minutes long, bottom half, just seven minutes. Oregon, ton of runners, or ton of batters got sent to the plate. Now 13 hitters for the Ducks. K.K. Humphreys, the second to bat in the sixth inning. Struck out looking in a nine-pitch at bat in the fifth. You said it, Jenny. 32 teams out of the 64 in the tournament will have their seasons end today. Tomorrow, it's all regional finals. So just two teams each from the 16 sites. Nice play by the freshman at short. Well, not only does Riho have great range out there at short, but her overhand velo is so good to be able to come up with a throw from a standstill. Didn't have a chance to move through that throw. Really nice play by the shortstop. Valerie Wong, who pinch hit in the fifth for Alyssa Daniel, back in there here in the sixth. And Jenny, this Saturday, elimination Saturday for half the field. Playing in the NCAA tournament, what's it like for these players? Well, in a situation like this game you've got right here, both teams are undefeated. So it's not a winner go home situation, but you definitely sit in the driver's seat if you win this game. It's the next game that we have, Harvard, Notre Dame, where there's a little bit more emotion involved. Their backs are against the wall. They have to perform or their season is over. There's that nasty changeup. We know that Kelly Turner has it. She has not thrown it a ton in this outing. It has been a short relief appearance so far, but I really like that change of speed to put it in the heads of these hitters for Oregon. 
Here comes her 30th pitch. A 1 2 to walk. Goes back to the gas. Missed outside. Wants well, a good change of speed for Turner. She throws upper mid to upper 60s and then comes back with that change up 10 to 12 miles an hour slower. It's hard as a hitter to stay in your legs to drive that change up because it spins quickly and it looks like it's a hard ball. That time Wong waits, shoots it out to left center. Reagan Johnson, the center fielder, has it. Three up, three down in the sixth for Callie Turner. Still a seven run Ducks lead. If Oregon wins here, they will await the winner of the 1 1 game. Winner of Harvard and Notre Dame later today. And it follows this one here on ESPN2. And then the winner of that one plays the loser of this one for a spot in the regional final. Of course, whoever wins this game would have to be beaten twice tomorrow in order to lose. Morgan Scott has been dealing for Oregon. That was pitch 70. Levels the count one and one to Christina Foreman. Yeah, it's been a complete game performance up to this point for Morgan Scott. An impressive outing for her after seeing three arms yesterday against Notre Dame for Oregon. Yeah, that's really what you'll see from Oregon. They've we only have three pitchers with more than 15 innings pitched this year. So it's Scott, Stevie Hansen, who started yesterday, went five strong innings, and Reagan Breedlove, who, like you said, we also saw yesterday in the win over Notre Dame. Well, and Coach Melissa Lombardi, the head coach for Oregon, talked about how she trains her pitchers to not just be starters and relievers and closers, but they need to make sure that each of them can fall in to any of those categories to be able to warm up quickly, come into a game, finish a game, or a short relief appearance. We'll have a battery meeting between Tara McGowan, all Pac-12 defensive team catcher, and Morgan Scott, all Pac-12 second teamer in the circle. And they're playing the chicken dance here for the duck meeting. <laughs> Poultry? Yeah. <laughs> Get our poultry <laughs> confused. <laughs> Scott's two two. Foreman clobbers it. Apo right field, gone. Christina Foreman brings some juice back to Bogle. The hog flags are flying. The leadoff batter for the sixth inning. Christina Foreman, the transfer coming over from Duke, who had 15 home runs last season, led the Blue Devils in average and RBI, comes away with a huge oppo taco shot, her eighth home run of the season. Call the Hogs for a while. And a gamble. After the solo shot, she had a solo shot herself last night. Almost got plunked as that ball hit the netting behind the plate. Hannah Gamble's power numbers are down from a season ago by almost a by a third. I mean, just five home runs on the season. She had 18 last year. I really expected to see Hannah Gamble explode with the departure of so many home run hitters from a year ago, but a lot of pressure on her shoulders had her pressing early. We're seeing her play a lot more free here at the end of the year. 
The count now two and two. The first ball was called after a delay issued to Oregon. Yeah, we've seen a ton of time being used in the circle by Morgan Scott. I'm grateful that they did call that penalty because it's been abused all game long. I mentioned all the star power that left Arkansas this year is watch Tara McGowan. That glances her on the face mask. She, she's so cool. Not worried. It's a pretty sweet mask, too. And that's Reagan Breedlove up in the Oregon pen. Gamble skies this one. Shallow right, fighting the sun again. Ali Bunker this time hauls it in. The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City. The action begins Thursday. Here's Casey Hoffman, 0 for 2 today after a great performance last night. But for Arkansas, just to be back here hosting a regional for the third year in a row is very impressive considering everyone who left. KB Sides, the player of the year in the SEC last year, Daniel Gibson, Lenny Malkin, Taylor Ellsworth, Hannah McEwen. The list goes on. Yeah, so many big names that have been impactful players for Arkansas. The Difel effect in true form, being able to replace those big names and host again here in the postseason after so many big names departed. And even mentioned Mary Half in the circle, a great pitcher, forming a dynamic duo with Shanice Dels. There is Courtney Difel. What a turnaround for this program. I think what's most important, or most impressive, as Hoffman skies this one in the infield. It's caught by Morgan Scott, two down in the top of the sixth. Most impressive stat for Courtney Dyfel's era, and there are a lot. They were ranked one time in program history before she arrived, one week in 2013. Now in her eighth, her eighth season, they've been ranked 83 times in the top 25 poll. Well, in 2022, set a single season wins record, won the regular season outright for the first time in conference history. Still in search of their first World Series appearance. And they've come so close. Last year hosted a Super Regional, lost to Texas in three games. Those Longhorns went on to the World Series final, and then in 2021, they lost to Arizona in two games, both those times hosting here at Bogle. Yeah, both of those were host opportunities in Super Regionals. This year, the ho they are 11 seed, so they will have to travel if they win this regional. They match up with the Oklahoma State Regional, so keep your eye on that one if you are a Hog fan to see where this could potentially go if they can make it past Oregon. But right now, Oregon in command of this game. 2-1. Nice stop over at first from KK Humphreys to retire Lauren Kamens in. And it's still a six-run run lead for the Ducks after the solo shot from Christina Foreman. And also hit a two-run bomb last year in Fayetteville when Oregon came here and lost twice to Arkansas. In the top of the seventh, Callie Turner still in the circle for the Razorbacks, facing off with Hannah Delgado to begin this top of the seventh. Oregon's head coach, Melissa Lombardi, told us they feel like they have unfinished business here in Fayetteville, and they have certainly played like it, especially today. Well, when you look at the amount of returners that Oregon has on their roster that have played in this ballpark, that have familiarity in the postseason with the way things are structured here in Fayetteville, I mean, they have the advantage knowing that the Razorbacks only have two starters in the lineup that played in the postseason last year. talked about how impressive it is for Arkansas to be back in this position considering what they lost. For Oregon, is their 23rd appearance in the regional. And they've been ranked in the top 25 54 consecutive weeks under Coach Lombardi. The turnaround she's engineered in Eugene, considering how much they struggled in year one, they went 5-19 and 19 in Pac-12 play in Lombardi's first year after an exodus in the transfer portal. To be back where they are now, that's also pretty darn impressive. 
Well, she talked about how she is trying to make this group of Oregon Ducks a bunch of boss ladies. And we asked the team what that meant. What is a boss lady? And they said it's to be well-rounded, to get what you want, and say what you mean, not needing the approval of others. Delgado off the end of her bat. Natalia Rijo all over it for Arkansas. One down in this seventh inning. Coach Lombardi said, as females, it's all about empowering each other. As coaches, we're supposed to empower our athletes, not just prepare them for softball, but prepare them for the world. And she feels like she has prepared this group for the postseason. She feels like this is the most experienced and prepared squad she has had while at Oregon. Losing to Arkansas last year, she said, was actually something that really helped us coming into this season, being able to come back to Bogle Park. Taya Bird in there, down 0-2 in the count. She has been the duck flying high in this regional this weekend. Big home runs in both games. Goes down here swinging. Three pitches from Callie Turner. Well, and that's a huge strikeout, knowing the kind of weekend that Taya Bird has had. This pitch up in the zone, getting the swing and miss. Callie Turner turning on some upper velo to get the strikeout. Now she can crank it up, get up to 68, 70 miles per hour. That completes Turner's first trip through the lineup. And Paige Sinicki, who singled twice in the fifth inning, takes strike one. Sinicki pops that one high into the sun. Halverson fights it and squeezes it in foul territory. And Arkansas has got one last chance. They need six runs in the bottom. Johnson looks on the leadoff hitter in the on-deck circle. Arkansas last year beat Oregon twice here at Bogle Park in the regionals. Beat them 6-2 to two and 9-3. to three. Ducks won two other games, but they could not beat the Razorbacks. And the Hogs went to the Supers and hosted a Super for the second year in a row. Well, it was the long ball last year, Drew, for Arkansas that really got things done for them. Arkansas had four home runs in that final game. Only one of them, though, was hit by a returner. A lot of home run power has graduated off of this squad. Rio's got a little pop in her bat. Five home runs this year. Almost had one in the fifth. Went deep to right field. Ariel Carlson, even if it wasn't a robbed home run, it was definitely robbed extra bases. 100%. And what you need, though, in this situation for Arkansas, sitting with a six-run deficit, you cannot be swinging for the fences. You're looking to tattoo this ball on a line, punch it into the grass, and just string base hits together. Morgan Scott still in the circle for Oregon. Their starting pitcher trying to go complete game. Now 92 pitches today. She has been consistently strong. Gave up one run in the first, then back-to-back -back one, two, three innings. Two runs in the fourth, none in the fifth, one in the sixth. Spreading out the damage, and she starts here with a backward strikeout. Sixth of the day for Morgan Scott. Well, and Riho knew as soon as she let that one go that that one was going to be a called strike. When you are sitting at a six-run deficit, you have to be aggressive and not let the umpire take away an at-bat like that. You have to get the bat off your shoulder. Reagan Johnson is one for three today. You see the Oregon infield squeezed in against the slapper and one of the speediest players in college softball. On well, the defense for Oregon is gonna definitely make sure that they squeeze in on Johnson, knowing the kind of speed she's been able to 
put in play here today. Your corners will be pinched in in case she dra drops the drag, and then your middle defenders will try to get, take the advantage of a slap. That's on the outside edge, one and two. Well, and one thing we haven't seen either of these teams who both have slappers do is use that chop slap where they punch the ball into the ground, allow the ball to hop high. Here at Bogle Park, you typically get a very generous hop. One, two. Johnson barely got a piece. I might have hit Tara McGowan, the catcher, in that bare right hand. Uh, McGowan. One of the team leaders. Yeah, foul tip by Johnson. Ricochets down into that right hand. I mean, direct shot right into it. You want to make sure that that hand stays behind you when you're receiving because those foul tips definitely leave a mark. And you don't want to leave that vulnerable throwing hand out there for a foul tip ball. Gowan gets a nice round of applause from the fans here at Bogle Park. Almost all Arkansas fans, naturally, but we do see some specks of green and yellow, <coughs> yellow, some neon in the stands here. Drew, those are the ushers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you can see them from Mars. One, two. Do you like the yellow uniforms, Jenny? I think they're pretty sharp. I mean, fresh batteries obviously in them. They are bright, <laughs> but definitely a cool look with the cleats that match. Two and two to Reagan Johnson. Slaps this one right back to the circle. Scott is on it, and Humphreys can't squeeze it at first, so Reagan Johnson is safe with one down here on the bottom of the seventh in Arkansas in need of six, and that's a single for Johnson, her second today. I actually like that KK Humphreys goes and makes a tag on Johnson because as this ball gets away from Humphreys at first, Johnson makes what I thought to be a little bit of an advancement or a look like she was going to advance over to second. Typically, you can tag them and make them be out, but the umpire did rule that tag as a safe and puts Johnson at first. Reagan Kramer at the plate now. She has been clutch in this regional. Two for three today. Grand slam last night that ended the game in the fifth inning against Harvard. Johnson at first is certainly a threat to steal. Really the only Razorback with a green light. They're not aggressive, stealing bases typically. Only 26 on the season, but they are 26 for 26, so they pick their spots. Johnson, 18 of 18, and she was 109 of 109 in high school. Well, Drew, while I love to see aggressive base running, when you're sitting down six runs right now, pushing that kind of play over at second base does not make a whole lot of sense when you've got to put a ton of runs up on the board. Bird gives it a look over at third. Lands on top of the Arkansas dugout and skips into the stands. And a nice grab on the one hop by that guy. That's a good move. And he gave it that's, away. That's a right? good move. Right? The guy's got game. Morgan Scott has crossed the 100 pitch plateau today. Kramer lifts that 2 2, shallow left. Luchar's got it. And Arkansas is down to its final out.
Ryland Hedgecock, the last hope for Arkansas. It's a pretty good spot to be in. She's two for three today, and she's been one of their best hitters all season long. Yeah, definitely the most powerful bat in the lineup for Arkansas. Those 20 home runs, the most of her career as she's had to sit behind Lenny Malkin first couple of seasons. This ball is sky, shallow center field. Delgado is in and she makes the grab. And Oregon is on to the regional final. They explode for eight runs in the fifth. And they are one win away from the Supers. Ducks capitalize in a really big fifth inning to come away with a huge win. A lot of it had to do with the bat of Taya Bird. Just one hit on the day in this game, but it was a huge one. Capitalized with bases loaded, ball down and off the plate, lifted over the left field wall, grand slam for Taya Bird.